Hadley here. I just want to say happy December. Talking about December makes me think about Christmas. And Christmas this year is going to look a little different, which is completely fine because Steamboat Kids still wants to celebrate with you and your family. We are going to be providing a happy birthday Jesus bag that you can come by and pick up next Sunday, so Sunday the 13th from 1 to 3 p.m. We hope to see you there. to the most awesome and fun time of year, Christmas. I don't know about you, but I look forward to Christmas all year long. It's such a fun time that we get to celebrate with our friends and with our family and everything gets covered with lights and decorations. It is just so amazing. Now, can you tell me why we celebrate Christmas? Christmas means celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. Mm, that I just love that, God's greatest gift. So all month long, we're celebrating Jesus and we're talking about the true meaning of Christmas. You see, Christmas can get so crazy and big and fancy and exciting, but it's also simple. There's no assembly required for this holiday. Jesus is the greatest gift, the greatest gift we've ever been given. Kyle and Jeff are a gift also. So let's see what they have in store for us today. It's December! Yeah! Christmas time! Christmas, oh, it's Christmas time? Mountains open, skiing. I didn't even know. My mom didn't even tell me. Well, yeah, I'm gonna get into the Christmas spirit. Do you wanna get in the Christmas spirit? I've got my coat on, I've got my ski pass. I'm ready to get in the Christmas spirit. All right, Christmas spirit. I always get so excited about Christmas, but I'm also excited to share about the most amazing promise that God gave us, the promise of a Savior. At Christmas, we celebrate how God kept His promise when He sent His Son, Jesus. One of the most famous decorations that we see at Christmas is a Christmas tree, like this one over here. Well, maybe not exactly like this tree. This tree is empty and dark. Let's fix that. There, that's a little better. You know, throughout history, Things didn't always go well for God's people. There was a lot of darkness, but God always provided some light in the darkness, some hope that he would help. The Bible is full of famous stories of God and his people throughout history. So let's dive in and look at what today's famous story is. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Isaiah, chapter nine, verse six. Jess stared out the window at the ice beating down. Every holiday plan for the weekend had been canceled, and to top it off, the school had just released Jess's most recent grades. A D in language arts? What happened, Jess? I don't know. You're such a good storyteller. I just, I can't make all the words work out when I try to write it down. Can I go play Mindstorm? Hun, you need to read for an hour first. An hour? I thought it was 30 minutes. Your teacher and I talked. We think a little more reading time will help. Jess glared. I don't have anything to read. You've got an entire bookshelf in your room. Those are little kid books. Then look at Emma's bookshelf. Emma was Jess's older sister, already in high school. Fine, whatever. Jess stalked upstairs to Emma's room, peeked inside. The room was empty, but everything was neatly organized. Emma had even done all of the colorful artwork on her own walls. Miss Perfect. Just sighed. Everything seemed to come easily to Emma. Writing, math, friends, life. I'll probably be stuck in fifth grade for the rest of my life. Jess stood in front of Emma's bookshelf, running her finger over the thick spines. At last, a swirl of color on the bottom shelf caught her eye. Comic book Bible. Huh. 
Jess thumped down onto the floor and pulled the book off the shelf. She flipped it open, and color exploded off the page. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The images of creation were vivid and detailed, as if she were right there. Huh. Pretty cool. Jess found herself drawn into the familiar stories, seeing and hearing them in a brand new way. Moses and the Red Sea, the fall of Jericho, David and Goliath, Esther boldly approaching the king, David's incredible poetry in the Psalms. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. After the Psalms, though, Jess paged into unfamiliar territory. Isn't Daniel in the lion's den around here somewhere? Who's this guy? Jess stared at a man with a long white beard, using a quill to scribble on a scroll. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, he will rule over us, and he will be called Wonderful Advisor and Mighty God. He will also be called Father Who Lives Forever and Prince Who Brings Peace. Hey! Jess nearly dropped the book. She glanced up to see Emma standing in the doorway. What are you doing in my room? Mom said I could pick a book. Well, ask next time, okay? I didn't touch anything. Okay, okay, it's fine. Emma settled down on the floor beside Jess and took a look at the book. Aunt Chris gave me this book when I started high school. It's pretty cool. I mean, until this part. It's kind of hard to make a guy writing a letter exciting. Just pointed out Mr. Whitebeard. Oh, you mean Isaiah? Who's he talking about? Jesus? Yeah, but it's way more amazing when you look at the big picture. You see, God's people were in big trouble. Over and over, the Israelites promised to love and obey God. And then every single time, they turned their backs on him. Turn their backs? Like how? Well, they'd start praying to false gods like other nations around them, trying to do things their own way. So God allowed them to be captured by other nations. Emma flipped back, showing images of battles, powerful foreign kings, groups of captives. The Israelites got in really big trouble. Things looked hopeless. So God just ditched them? No way. Every single time, God showed he was still with them. He sent kings who loved God, like David and Solomon and Josiah. And he sent prophets like Elijah and Isaiah to speak God's truth and hope to the people. Even though they totally messed up. Yep. Through it all, God promised that he was going to send someone who would rescue them forever. Just flipped back to Isaiah and read slowly. A child will be born to us, a son will be given to us. He will rule over us. That's only one prophecy. There are hundreds of prophecies in the Old Testament that talk about Jesus coming. Jess nodded, trying to take it in. That's a lot of promises. And God came through. The Israelites had to wait a long time, but God kept every single one of those promises when he sent Jesus to live on earth. His very own son. Oh, little town of Bethlehem and all that. You can take the book if you want. Emma tapped the comic book Bible and just smiled. Does God promise that I'll get a better grade in language arts? <laughs> no, but he does promise to be with you and give you the patience and courage you need to keep working on it. They both listened to the ice rattling against the window. Hey, you want to play Mindstorm? Sure. Just let me read a little more first. Emma gave a thumbs up and Jess settled back down to keep reading. She paged forward to the book of Luke, eager to see for herself again how God had delivered on his promise to send a savior. We can note that God will keep these promises because he always keeps his promises. We can have hope when we put our trust in him. That's what Christmas is all about. It's about remembering that God keeps his promises. It's about celebrating God's greatest gift, his son Jesus. And the bottom line for today is we can have hope because God keeps his promises. Say that with me again. We can have hope because God keeps his promises. When things don't go your way, when something happens that you didn't expect and you're not sure what to do, 
When life seems dark and scary, you can always have hope. You can remember that God always keeps his promises like he kept his promise to send Jesus as our Savior. Since he always keeps his promises, he'll also keep his promise that he is always with you and that he is always working for your good no matter what. Christmas spirit time. Yes, here we go. This is, you don't need your coat. Let's get into these bad boys. Hey, wait for this, Kyle. Christmas spirit. We did it. Wow. How do you feel, Kyle? Glorious. How do you feel? I feel like this is the glory of Christmas. Oh, the glory of Christmas. Yeah. I like that. I'm excited. I'm ready to celebrate Christmas. All month long? All month long, baby. Let's do it. Wow, Kyle and Jeff are in the holiday spirit and our God is a promise keeper. What could be better? Through the words of Isaiah, God promised that he would send a savior. God promise came true when he sent his son, Jesus. God was faithful to keep his promises in the past. And we know that because he kept his promises in the past, he will keep his promises today and in the future. You see, our bottom line is, is we can have hope because God keeps his promises. All right, I need everyone to stand up and say it with me. Are you ready? We can have hope because God keeps his promises. That is so good and that's so true and that's so right. Because sometimes things happen in life that just don't, that we just don't understand. Sometimes we feel a little anxious or scared about what will happen in the future. But we can always have hope because we know that God keeps his promises. Our basic truth is that we can trust him no matter what. That's right, we can trust God no matter what. Christmas might look a little different this year. It's been a tough year for a lot of us, but the real meaning of Christmas is something we can celebrate no matter what. It's not about great gifts or even delicious treats. Christmas is about celebrating the gift of Jesus. When you remember how God sent Jesus for you, and that he keeps all of his promises, you can have hope in any situation. Our memory verse for this month is Luke 2.11. Let's read it together. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. All month, let's work to memorize this because it's a great reminder of the real meaning of Christmas. NC Moat Kids, we'll see you next week.